Trouble sometimes, sometimes I hear Filling men's hearts with fear Freedom we Freedom all we hold dear Now is that stay Humble your hearts to God, to God. Save from the chastening rod Seek the way pilgrims Try Christians away My Jesus is, Jesus coming, is coming soon Morning or Morning night or night or night Thanks for joining us. We're going to talk about young people today. We're going to talk about young people in Nashville, Tennessee, because we got an expert here that knows all about it, and he's going to give us all the answers. And it's Captain Gordon Howie. Did I pronounce your last yes, name sir, right? Yes, sir, did. You've been here before, Captain. I have. You I was have. a captain when you was here the last time, yes, weren't sir. you? Okay. Glad to have you back. Uh, now, you are with Metro Police, been with them for a day or two. For a minute. How many? How long have you been with them? 27 years. Well, uh, where did you grow up? Uh, here in Nashville. So you are homegrown. I am. I am. Glad, okay. to, be, glad to be one of those. <laughs> That's right. Nashville's a good place to grow up, isn't it? It sure is. It's always been a good place to live, hasn't and, it? Uh, I think so. Uh -huh. And you have a military career, did you? No, sir. No. You just come straight into the police department, which yep. is very paramilitary type operation. It is. It is. It is. Why did you want to be a police officer? I think for me it was something that I wanted to do from the time I can remember 10, 11, 12 years old. Um, and it was it was because I thought it was neat. I had friends of mine whose fathers were police officers, and something about uh, just a neat thing. But as I got older, I realized that it was an opportunity to try to help people and uh, to make a difference. And then, of course, then being a young man, you know, it was it was a lot of just the coolness of you know being a police officer in a uniform and a gun and a car and blue lights and doing all that. Uh, of course, after you've done it for a while, you realize that it's not so much about that. It's so much more about many other things. But I think, bottom line, it boiled down to, you know, that person that could could make a difference. When I talk to my inner city teens, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm encouraging them to be police officers, mm -hmm. boys and girls, because um, they don't. They shy away from it mm -hmm. because you know, coming out of the inner city, they they have sometimes just they just don't want to be a police officer. But when I find some of them is talking, and they talk a little bit about it, and I've had your people come out and talk to mm -hmm. us as a group, it's always one or two after that change their minds, say, I'd like to, and it's because I want to help people. Yeah. You know, I don't think as a society, I don't think we see, and I guess it's a lot to do with television, that we don't see as a society that police officers' job is to help people. And I think that's tragedy because, man, I know a lot. I don't know all y'all do, but mm -hmm. I know a lot what you do because we work in the inner city. You're in the inner city. Y'all knock more doors than we mm -hmm. do, and uh, uh, shame on us. But uh, y'all are involved in families. I think you have to be. Um, and it, it just it boils down to that whole thing. of I can say in my 27-year career that when I came on, um, it wasn't so much, I mean, the culture of the of the organization, and I can speak that this is kind of what I think law enforcement in general. The culture of the organization at that point wasn't so much about helping people as it was you had to go out there and answer your calls and take care of yourself. And you know, somebody needed to be arrested, you arrested them, and you showed up at somebody's house on a call, and you it, you took it upon yourself to try to be that person to help them. But it wasn't such a culture of this is what law well, enforcement well, is. Well, yes, uh, but now it's it's transitioned and it I think all of that came about with the community policing uh, philosophy when a lot of people dug into it so you take an organizational culture that says this is what we're going to do and you got leaders in that organization that believe in that philosophy and then just I think uh, innately the qualities and characteristics of somebody wanting to be involved in law enforcement you already got that mm -hmm. as part of your core values right so that it just it makes sense when they come together. And community policing is not anything that's brand spanking new. It's been around since the formation of modern policing in the 1800s with Sir Robert Peel, if you've ever heard anybody talk that. about that. No, I haven't. But, Wyatt Earp was the last one I heard about Well, <laughs> Wyatt probably, he probably had a little bit of community policing <laughs> philosophy there, here and there. But uh, So it, although it is a dangerous profession at times and you have to deal with the worst of the worst, uh, you don't know in uh, a career of five years, 10 years, 30 years, how many lives that you actually touch that you, you can make a positive impact on. So, you know, bottom line to it is you're talking about the, the young people that you finally get them to go in that line of work. I mean, 
that's what we need. We need people from the community. And I, I don't want to say anything negative. Nashville has grown into a city that we have a lot of people from a lot of different places. I mean, you go down Nolensville Road and you know, there's just a lot of cultural diversity. I call there. it Mexican. Right. It's, it's <laughs> you name it. I mean, it's I try to learn Spanish. <laughs> Who ever thought I'd oh, have yeah. to have a Spanish woodbine? <laughs> I thought that was the last place on planet Earth that would oh, take. Oh, I know it. Would be one night. I live in Woodbine. Mm -hmm. that, I mm -hmm. live out in Minkley, and uh, go to bed one night, get up next morning, and it's changed. Yeah, oh yeah, it, it really has. And. Um, it's, it's different. I can't learn Spanish. No, I've tried, little, I've tried, I've tried. I know hey, a few things. My grandkids just said I went rattle and talking mm -hmm. Spanish. And I don't know where they were just pulling my leg or speaking, but it sounds good. It sounds good. <laughs> Dude, it got you fooled. It's got me fooled, yeah. But it, uh, our city is, and you need children from all cultures. Because mm -hmm. uh, I've been told, I can't remember, Gordon, but I, I've been all to told how many languages is at Glencliff High School. And I forget too. It, it, it's something like 16, 17, 19 or something. Maybe more than that. I think it. I, I, I think I've been told it was more than that. And uh, so that just shows how complex mm -hmm. it is when a police officer walks mm -hmm. upside of a car and having to deal with folks. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, uh, the guy got behind me in a car yesterday, and he was driving a young fella, and he was Hispanic, and and my granddaughter picked up on him. He was riding my bumper real mm -hmm. bad, and she said, "Man." It, is something wrong with him? I said, no, bottom line, he's too close, but you watch him, he's a good driver. He knows what he's doing. He was looking at this, he was looking at that. You can tell where he's had a car. He's a good driver. He, he just got a little too close to uh -huh. me and made me a little nervous, but then he backed off. He realized what he'd done. But um, it's good to be in Nashville, and it's good. To, I'm proud of our police department. I'm talking about community policing, uh, Commander Alexander, mm -hmm. when he was commander. Now he's captain again in charge of something. Um, but when he was commander in the South Precinct, he told me that uh, uh, community policing is what it's about. Mm -hmm. And he pushed hard for officers to get out of the car, mm -hmm. get to know the people, shake hands with people, mm -hmm. get to know mom and daddy, mm -hmm. get to know everybody working together. And then Chief Anderson says, hey, we want those tips. We mm -hmm. want to know who we are talking to, and, and we want to be a part of the community. That's a good philosophy. Well, it's a must. Uh, I think the success that we as a police department have had in Nashville, which leads to the bigger success of the city of Nashville, has to do with the fact that we embraced that philosophy many, many years ago. And it, it's how we do business day in and day out. Uh, we have roughly, uh, I think, a little more than 600 community groups. Um, and, you know, it's neighborhood watches, different island things where police officers, men and women, go each and every I can't remember the number of meetings each and every week, but I mean, we, we attend meetings when the community on a regular basis, but that's what it takes. You have somebody on your, all the teams, all the precincts, it is precincts. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. They have a person on there and their whole job is to connect with the community. That's correct. What do you call those people? Well, we call them a COCO, the community coordinator. There you go. I knew you had some kind of slang. Name. Sergeant. Yeah, they're yeah. called COCOs, uh -huh. but that that's their job is to be there. Is to be that liaison between the police department and that particular community that that precinct serves. Because each community has personality. That is true. Yeah, and so with them being it, they get a rep, they get equal that community, that personality gets an equal mm -hmm. representation, and that's important. Mm -hmm. Now you're over youth services. What used to be youth guidance? Youth guidance. Yes, sir. And say I was on the street doing work when it was youth guidance. Mm -hmm. Had two boys work down there. I call them. I call one of them Matt Dillon, and I've got what I call the other <laughs> <laughs> They arrested half of South Nashville <laughs> with me. Oh, that was the days back when. Um, but it, um, you are involved with. What do the teenagers look like in Nashville from where you stand, sit and what you see? Uh, you work close with juvenile court. We do. We do. Um, you know, you have to. From my perspective, you kind of got to take it into consideration. The kids that we see are going to be kids that are victims or perpetrators of crimes. We we handle all crimes that involve a child from the age of 12 and under, except for robbery and except for sexual abuse cases. So, 12 and under, 18 and under. 12 and under. Now, and under. between 13 and 17, depending upon what kind of crime it is, we'll handle it. If, if a 13-year-old uh, commits a homicide uh -huh. and he's 16 or 17 years old then the precinct works that even if the, even if there's a the murder of a 16 or 17 year old child then the precinct works it now we'll assist but there's a little deline delineation in that now let me get a handle on this thing so you are a precinct within yourself 
Are you a well, what do you call a department? What do they well, call a you? division. Division. A division. So we okay. cover everything in the county, and we're a support element for all the precincts. For all the precincts. That's correct. How many people you have under we your have supervision? There's 14 detectives. Now, in the youth services division, there's 14 detectives. I have three sergeants, and then I have four what we call counselor slash case managers. Okay, and they got 14 detectives that work in youth services. Yes, sir. And, and then you got what on that? You got 14 detectives, and what are the well, case managers? What are they? Counselor, case managers. There's four of them. They're civilian employees. They're civilian employees. Yes, sir. And then I've got three sergeants that supervise those 14 detectives and the counselors. Okay. But now, kind of. And you're citywide. Yes, sir. Throughout the county. So what we do, there's a couple of things. One, there's an investigative unit, which are the 10 detectives, and they work, you know, crimes that occur at school. Um, could be petty thefts, depending upon the circumstances. We look at every child death, so every baby death, we take a look at it. Uh, any kind of child abuse, child neglect, you that type those. of thing, we look at those. Then I have four detectives that specifically uh, work runaway cases. So we, we have kinda, a lot of runaways in there. We do. Uh, we do. I now, it twice in one week. Right, and so our runaways can range. We thank goodness we don't have um, very many what you would consider an abduction or kidnapping. Every now and then there's what we would consider a custodial kidnapping. You know, I uh, so ex boyfriend. Uh, right, but we average uh, during the week about 27 reports of runaway kids, and then some of those are. Uh, Johnny comes home from school, mommy, daddy gets mad, spanks them, you got in trouble, and then little Johnny runs away down the street for a few minutes, mom and dad get nervous, call, uh, reports generated, and within 30 minutes the child's found. So that's within that. Uh, but with every runaway case, and then we have some that are the habitual runaways that are running away for uh, a multitude of reasons. But uh, One we, of my runaways, I was my wife was in the hospital, mm -hmm. and my granddaughter and I was sitting in a restaurant eating. We've been to the hospital and we're sitting in a restaurant, and my granddaughter is 11 years old. Mm -hmm. Her phone lit up. It was a child from her school had run away. Mm -hmm. And they were calling her for sanctuary because if my wife was at home, they'd come to our house and mm -hmm. we'd get mom and we'd get everybody mm -hmm. back together. But I couldn't take kid home with me with my wife not there and mm -hmm. this girl. Mm -hmm. I couldn't take her home. So we called Metro, mm -hmm. and, uh, and boy, she was upset when she might. We called Metro. Your officer showed up when he drove up. He said, and that's where you are. <laughs> you are he had already, he'd already been out after her earlier right, that night. Right, Called her earlier right. that night, took her off, and she took off again. And so I thought, okay, it's great. And so, uh, but that's where community and police department right. work together. Right. And uh, I think now all is well. Right. It took Good. a while. Yeah. But one of the things that we do with the runaway kids is that we try to reach out to every child and every parent or guardian of that child that runs away. And that's where the case managers, counselors come in. We try to debrief each kid. Why did you run away from home? What's going on? Uh, because there are generally sometimes opportunities that we can provide services to the family to try to help parents, help child, and prevent the runaway from happening you know, again. What I find when they come to me or my people will come to them, it's usually uh, mom and daddy don't live together, mm -hmm. biological parent don't live together, boyfriend comes in. Mm -hmm and he thinks he is in charge of everybody in town, has no parenting skills whatsoever, and instead of trying to win the trust of the child over and realize he's a guest in the home, he comes in abusive attitude. Yeah. And when that happens, you don't see that child have to go back into right. that, uh, that situation. You won't be able to have somebody like you tap him on the mm -hmm. shoulder and say, hey, brother, we got to talk a little mm -hmm. bit here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I've seen that happen. They're not as bad as they think they are. You That's can get them to true. think. That's true. Because yeah, the kids get on their nerves. The mm -hmm. kids push their buttons and get on their nerves. And that cause what your counselors can do and help them and so forth. Um, so, but you, if there's a crime, if there's a major crime, let me get this straight now. If there's a major crime, if there's a, a shooting, mm -hmm. two kids playing with a gun, they're seven years old, gun goes off, shoots one. Would you handle that or would yes, you turn it no, over? We would. If it's seven years old. We if would. it's 11 years old, you're turned over to the no, no, Well, 12 and under. Oh, 12 and under, keep. okay. 13, but now we could have a 14 year, uh, a situation that involves a 14 year old, and depending, we consult with the precinct and determine who's best suited to work that particular case. So it's possible we could take it, but generally, those, depending upon the circumstances, the precinct will handle. 
I'm, I want to talk a little bit about your involvement with juvenile court mm -hmm. because I know we've had a judge change uh, in Nashville, and I assume you're going to try to pursue the same relationship oh, with the new judge that mm -hmm. you did with the first judge. But y'all want to work together and identify the children who are really in, in the, mm -hmm. I don't say in trouble, but the ones who are high risk, right? And keep them from being. It costs so much to incarcerate a person. That's true. Two point three million is what I think the last figures I had from Darren Hall, and man. Uh, Captain, if we can divert a child, and this is something churches has got to understand, uh, police department can do their work, but when families break down, that's a church issue. And, and churches, I want to challenge all of you that's going to church, get your church out of the church building, get out of the community where people are hurting, and do ministry to the people. And don't wait for the people to come to your church building. We learned at the Alamo, sitting inside the building is not going to work. You got to get out into the community, people, and. And we need to have the values that we have in Christianity out of the church building, out in the community, uh, helping the community so that the police officers can have a better community to work in. Did I say that right? You're on it. A little too strong, probably. For, well, you wouldn't have said that, but uh, I can get away with it. That's no <laughs> um, let's talk about when. Let's talk about the, some of the things that you are doing for the severely at-risk youth. Well, one of the things we've been working on in collaboration with the Department of Children's Services and Juvenile Court, uh, as well as some other uh, organizations in the city, is a program to specifically target recidivism in the youth juvenile population. Um, and what the program is going to be, and we've not officially kicked it off yet, but we're, we're real close to doing that, is to take and identify more or less the worst of the worst kids. And we're going to do that through a a fairly scientific uh, way without trying to be considered picking on someone but basically if you've committed crimes certain crimes uh, a number of times if you've been listed as a suspect in a crime uh, what your family background looks like how often are you going to school are you truant in school so take a lot of those factors into consideration and say okay you, we consider you the most at-risk youth to can continue in this cycle of violence so here's what we're going to offer you, and most of these kids that we've identified so far are either already in DCS custody or in control of juvenile court because they're serving out a sentence for a crime. So what we're going to do is basically um, like an intensive aftercare program. So when, when they come out of whatever facility that they're in, that there'll be services in place, make sure that they're enrolled in school, make sure that the family has the support that the family needs, and then once this kid comes out, if, if they're a child who needs some sort of, maybe they're not necessarily interested in school and they've got a few things they need to finish up there, but they're interested in learning a particular trade or job, we've got some people in the community that are willing to help with that. Um, you know, we've, your uh, ministry is one of those folks that we'll be in contact with. Other churches in the community uh, that some of these kids are going into that we've reached out to some of those folks. So this kid comes out, then there's a, there's a cadre of people. It's not just police, it's not just juvenile court, but it's um, folks in that particular community say, okay, listen here, we value you. That's good. We want you to be successful. And bottom line, it's gonna boil down to what you're willing to participate in, but part of the rules and regulations for your release is that you're gonna participate in this, and we're gonna check up on you. And the plan now is to have a program that lasts about six, seven weeks. Uh, there's a provision to let it go a little bit further, but it's just very intensive. We're going to knock on your door. We're going to do curfew checks. We're going to do all this. And then uh, the understanding through juvenile court DCS, if you violate this, there's zero tolerance. You go back. And then maybe we'll give you another opportunity. Now, the ultimate goal, which we probably won't, I will probably have retired by the time we get to this, but the vision is, is if you could ever get a system in place that these worst of worst kids that have already been incarcerated and institutionalized, it's whatever. Fact. It's a matter of time. Get them out, and then we start looking at kids. As soon as they start to crop up, you know, an 11-year-old who begins to shoplift and doesn't go to school, then we can reach out and say, listen, you know where you're headed. This is the wrong path, and let's cut it off before they ever get to where they've committed the very serious crimes. Now, one good example, this has been a little bit over a year ago, if my memory is correct, but there was a young man by the name of Eric Goodner, and I believe he's 17 years old. He may have turned 18 by now. But he was involved in gang activity. And uh, one morning, because another young man who, by all accounts, 
had um, just a model kid, went to school, minded his own business, wasn't involved in any drugs, gangs, etc. He had made some comment to some other girl about the gang. This Eric Goodner hears about it, and he shows up while his kid's waiting on the school bus, pulls out a gun, and kills him right there. Eric Goodner was one of them that had cropped up. He was one that we, if we had had the program in place, he was one of them that was on a lot of list of people said, this is a kid we need to reach out to before he, he does something. He would have been probably diverted from that kind of behavior. Now, at least been given the opportunity to divert from that behavior. Who knows? I mean, you, you could what if it all day. But, I mean, that's the prime, that's the example. If, if you could reach out and prevent that, and if that's all you ever did with this program, well, you save one life. And that's, uh, you save the life, and then you, he's going to be incarcerated, so you save two million. I mean, you know, it mm -hmm. just goes on and on and on. Sin, what we call in the religious community, sin. Sin right, is right. expensive. It, it costs. Is. Yep. Now, this is what we've learned. Uh, Larry Cantrell, mm -hmm. who is now the executive director of Nashville Institute of Ministry, is there to take my place. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever that time comes, I'm not quitting, but whenever that time comes, <laughs> that's when it comes. Because I'm trying to get everything set for the ministry. Because we got better days ahead. Mm -hmm. We bought a new facility over mm -hmm. here, and what you're talking about is going to play right into what we do mm -hmm. with juvenile court working together. And, and so all this is going to just be a beautiful, beautiful relationship to help the children of Nashville. I call it a game changer. Mm -hmm. uh, Darren Hall calls it the community of hope. The the, the mall of hope mm -hmm. is when you walk mm -hmm. in our facility. And I want you to come and see it. Because when you see it, it sells itself. You'll all see right. the dream will be there. What Larry's doing is fine, and he's done a pilot program for four years. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the same children that you're talking about. And what he's done in his one-on-one -on -one relationship, sitting down with a child, because we have trust among the children because mm -hmm. we've been transporting them. And we, we hauled her grandmother. Mm -hmm. She rode with us. So we've got family ties with these children. When he sits down with them, and he calls it Sparks Works. Mm -hmm. And he says, what is it? And Larry's All-American, so he's into the sports thing. He asks him, what is your spark? What really is it in life you want to be? I used to ask him when I was a youth minister working with a teenager, uh, look around in the public. Look around on uh, on a work on a Tuesday morning. Look around while you're sitting on the stumps. I call them the stumps mm -hmm. out there in the project. Look around. Who has the job that you would like to have? Well, that's what Larry does to him. Mm -hmm. He said he calls it sparks. What is it that you're really interested in? And the kid says, "Okay, I'd like to be a police officer. That's what I'm really interested in." Okay, um, what kind of grades are you making? Oh, I'm making um, uh, all Fs. Okay, mm -hmm. so you're going to be a police officer, and you're failing. So, why do you want to be? A, how are you going to be a police officer? And what he does, he ties in to what they want to be. Mm -hmm. Find out whether they are just running a dream or whether they really got plans. That's what they really like mm -hmm. to do. And the key to it is, and that's y'all got these counselors. The key to it, and when you're talking to that kid, you've got to start by finding out what they really want mm -hmm. to do. Cut all the smoke away, mm -hmm. young un. What is it that you really want to do, mm -hmm. son? When you get that spark, okay, let's start working toward accomplishing that goal. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see, we're making four Fs. Let's see if we can get one of these up mm -hmm. a little bit. Let's work on this. When you get that spark, you know, and you tell him, okay, I tell you what, I know, Captain, uh, in the police department, I'll let you, I'll talk to you, and he'll visit with you, and he might let you just ride with him mm -hmm. uh, for a half an hour or so and mm -hmm. spend a little time. The kids change. Yeah. His world changed yeah. right, right then. So all of a sudden, their world changes, mm -hmm. and, and Captain, if we can do that with not a, not a large number of children, but if we can do that with the right number of mm -hmm. children, uh, you're on target. We're going to make a difference in this city, oh, even so. greater than what we've already mm -hmm. done, and we made an impact in this city. We ain't got but four minutes to go. Is there anything I need to ask you about in four minutes? Because I, don't want, I want you to accomplish what you need to accomplish by being here. I appreciate you being here. Well, I thank you, and I thank you for everything that you do for this community, and I, I just, I, it, it's, it's, this type of work uh, that has made Nashville what it what it is today, and we'll continue to make it a great city, and we'll just continue to grow and keep on keeping on. What I want to do, Captain, is when I get our building built out, we got to raise some more money. It's going to take some time, mm -hmm. uh, but we're committed to it. Our board's committed to it. The Churches of Christ in Nashville are committed to it. The Nashville community is going to be committed mm -hmm. to this thing before we get through, because I'm going to make sure they're committed <laughs> to it, and we're going to get through this. I want to bring you, Absolutely. people from juvenile court, yeah. school system, I want to get every one of us in our building, mm -hmm. sit down, and some of our young people. Mm -hmm. I want our young people that's grown up and work in our mm -hmm. ministry that has not made wrong decisions, or at least we ain't caught them making yeah, wrong right. decisions, what I tell them. And I want us to set a great big table, circle, 
and get in there and sit down and start talking oh, yeah. and saying, let's develop, let's take what you're doing, mm -hmm. take your plan, and where do we all fit into that, mm -hmm. and how do, can we be accountable to each other in this thing, and let's go after these young ones. Cause I, agree. I believe, I, I've told Sam, I want to do a talk show with our TV studio. Mm -hmm. He's going to have a great big studio in our mm -hmm. new building. Mm -hmm. I want to do a teenage talk show with teenagers writing it, doing oh, everything perfect. on it, mm -hmm. emceeing it, and having a talk show. Wouldn't it be powerful to have a group of teenagers having a talk show like you and I here talking about staying out of games, oh, yeah. bullying, absolutely, making good grades, that it's not cool to be. You, you mm -hmm. can make good grades. Everybody knows it's not good. Right. And you can actually do homework and enjoy doing homework. Right. That's I think it's so. Because uh, I, I know what it is to go to school and not have your homework. It's that, you know, you just constantly run the scam trying to get Oh, yeah. Fun. And we Absolutely. have so many children doing that. Uh -huh. That's and, unfortunate. Um, and we've got so many children that just, they just need somebody to put their arm around them and say, mm -hmm. You're all right. Come on. Let's see if we can do better. Oh, absolutely. I agree. It makes all the difference in the world. It does. I remember one day we was uh, having a class, and a little boy came in. His day port cards. And when we are transporting, we transport 800 children a week. Mm -hmm. And on port card day, there's some days you watch out for a full moon. I can't explain that. <laughs> but on port card day, you have to watch the way you handle the children because mm -hmm. they're very, some of them very angry. Mm -hmm. And this little boy was just outrageous. My wife walked over to him. She knew his fort, and she put her arm around him. She said, uh, what's wrong, son? Did you make a lot of flags today? And he sort of tuned up and said, I made every one of them. Mm. All of them was flags. Mm. And she hugged him, and she said, let me tell you something. Grades don't determine who you are. It's the depth of your character. Mm. I love you, and you're special, and we can get those grades up. That's mm -hmm. something that can be fixed. Mm -hmm. And that boy grinned, and I'm telling you what, Captain, went down and sat down in class and participated. Good. Just That's good. Because or he could turn out the door, throw him out of the class, and he'd have been a killer. Yeah. It's just that quick. Captain, it is good for y'all and what you do. Will you come back and spend some time with Absolutely. us? Absolutely. Would love to. I appreciate what you do. I want you to come by our offices. I most certainly will. And I want to work with you on this thing. We're going to make this city a place where I want every inner city child in Nashville to be able to have a shot at having a very good life. And, and you're, not a, yeah, you're not alone in that thought. That's right. It's a lot of people in there. Absolutely. That. Hey, thank you so much. <laughs> and I thank you, and I thank you for tuning in with us. And if you're having a problem with a child, don't hesitate to call us or call Metro Police, and they will help you. They won't hurt you. They will try to help you with your children. Parents will work together for the betterment of your children, and our children are going to make this city a great place to live. And we appreciate all of you tuning in. We appreciate you being a part of what we do at Inner City Ministry. And we're proud to have you on the team. Thank you. Trouble sometimes, Trouble sometimes I hear feeling in times with fear. Freedom we Freedom all we hold dear now is that stay. Humble your hearts to God. God. Save from the chastening rod. Seek the way Seek pilgrims, the way pilgrims try. try. Christians away. My Jesus is, Jesus is coming soon. Morning or morning night, or night or noon. noon. And all of the all dead shall rise, righteous me Watch in me the, the sky. sky. I'm going where no one dies, and we're bound. Troubles will soon we'll we'll be your happy forevermore. Happy forever more. When we meet on that shore, free from all cares. Troubles will soon be your happy forevermore. When we meet on that shore, free from all cares. Rising up rising in up the skies, skies, telling this world goodbye. Home and we will fly.